Good morning, my name is Hervé Lissek uh, and I will give you a short presentation on the use of electroacoustic absorbers as perfect anechoic termination at low frequency. Uh, this is a work uh, where uh, my postdoc, uh, Sinsin Go, and my two uh, PhD students, uh, Maxi Valery and Stanislav Sergeyev, helped me in uh, developing the, um, uh, the experimental facilities. So this is the outline of the presentation. I will uh, do a, a short introduction and also introduce shortly the electroacoustic absorber principle and then we'll go to an experimental demonstration, a live demonstration, and then we give some conclusions. So uh, anechoic termination are quite uh, uh, interesting in some application, especially in the impedance tube application for measuring absorption coefficient, for instance, or for measuring insertion loss. So in the first case, you need an anechoic termination to calibrate the impedance tube uh, to have a reference absorber to calibrate the microphone with the two uh, microphone method uh, in the ISO standard 10534-2. Uh, uh, but also in insertion loss measurement, as uh, if you want to simplify the estimation of the insertion loss in the transmission matrix, you need to use uh, an anechoic termination to ease the process for computing this uh, matrix. And the absorption coefficient in this case should be quite high, more than 99%, to have less reflecting coefficient as possible. The problem is that in the low frequency, you are limited by the uh, uh, lambda of the four rule that uh, dictates the dimension of the absorber that you need to provide to absorb frequency at a given uh, wavelength. So if you want to absorb, for instance, uh, uh, below 100 Hertz, you need uh, something like uh, 3 meters divided by 4, so uh, uh, 74 centimeters of absorber to be uh, to, to hope to be efficient enough. So here we have a limitation of space and we want to overcome this problem by using active noise control, active absorption, uh, active sound absorption. So we developed a concept of uh, electroacoustic absorber, which is basically using loudspeaker with an enclosure, the loudspeaker being uh, characterized by its still small parameters, the mass, the resistance, and the compliance of the membrane and the stiffness divided by the surface gives you the uh, specific acoustic impedance, which is the ratio of the pressure over the velocity if you use this resonator as a sound absorber. You can also use uh, this expression with uh, uh, the, re the resonant frequency omega zero uh, and the quality factor, the mechanical quality of factor QM. Basically, if you feed the coil with a certain current A, it gives a certain feed force uh, that will uh, add up with the pressure to change the velocity at the output. So the principle of the electroacoustic absorber is to use a feed forward scheme where you sense the pressure in front of the loudspeaker and filter it with a certain controller function that will uh, yield a certain contra, contra pressure that will uh, add up with the front pressure to uh, adjust the velocity to a target one. So here, if you specify a target impedance ZST, which is basically defined as the specific resistance RST, the resin frequency or and the quality factor, or you can also alternatively use another um, uh, definition by just changing the parameter of the resonator, the mass, the resistance and the compliance by uh, using coefficient mu m, mu r, mu c. Then you can define, if you define this as ZSC, do you define the target controller that should apply to achieve the target impedance that depends, here I've just highlighted in blue, what we can control on the electroacoustic absorber in the black uh, parameter as the parameter of the loudspeaker, so the surface of the membrane, the force factor BL, and the mechanical specific impedance, or the specific uh, impedance of the resonator, the mass, the, uh, res the resistance, and the, the compliance. So this is the layout of this, uh, so the, of this system. So we have microphone in front of the membrane and we have a loudspeaker that is fed by a current. So it's very important that we fed, feed a current as a function of the pressure to drive the velocity to the target value as a function of the pressure. So the velocity should be uh, the pressure divided by the target impedance. So let's go to the experimental demonstration. Uh, we have set up an impedance tube with uh, the two microphone methods. So here this is the electroacoustic absorber, which is mounted in a, a closed box. 
uh, we have the microphone in the front and we have uh, here the electrical input here we have the source the sound source the tube with the two microphone uh, so the three microphone the two for the measurement and the one for the control are uh, conditioned by this IEP conditioner which is made for ICP microphone and these microphones are used in a speed goat so one part is for the control so this microphone will be used in the control to feedback a current to the loudspeaker through this uh, current drive amplifier that drives the current of the electroacoustic absorber and on the measurement side you have the two microphones that are used here to uh, compute the transfer function and then de derive the impedance of the, the absorber or the absorption coefficient and all these things or the, the amplifier is fed by the DC power supply here. The first step of the calibration of the control is to measure the loudspeaker in the enclosure in open circuit. So we'll unplug the loudspeaker so that it's open circuit and we do the measurement of the absorption coefficient or the impedance of this loudspeaker. So as you can see uh, on the figure on the right, you see that the absorption coefficient presents a maximum, which is around at the resonant frequency of the loudspeaker in the enclosure, which is in the range of 150 hertz. Uh, on the left uh, scheme, you see the amplitude and the phase of the impedance, and you see that at the resonance, the phase is equal to zero. So this is the dashed line curve uh, that goes from minus pi over two uh, over plus pi over two, and the magnitude as um, present a, a, a minimum at the resonance, which is equal to the value of the acoustic resistance of this uh, loudspeaker, which has a certain value. Now we do the same measurement, but in short circuit. So I have this plug, which is basically a short circuit. So I will just plug it to the loudspeaker and we repeat the measurement. Now the two curve superimpose. So the two measurements, you see that the measurement with a short circuit present a higher value at resonance, even though it's uh, hidden by uh, the legend, uh, which is in the range of 0 0.8 uh, or even a bit more. I don't, I don't see clearly. Uh, also, you see uh, some um, uh, broader bandwidth of absorption. And you see that on the left curve that uh, the resonance you still have phased of impedance that is equal to zero and the amplitude of the, uh, the impedance has been shifted towards uh, higher values. Once we have done the two measurements of the open circuit and the short circuit uh, electroacoustic absorber, passive, uh, passive electroacoustic absorber, we need to do the identification of the TLS mode parameter. For that, we'll use a second interface that will download the two measurements and use curve fitting to estimate the parameter resistance, compliance, mass, BL factor, etc. And we get uh, those estimations that you see on the uh, new figure that uh, pops up, uh, which also provides estimation of new values for the resistance, the compliance, uh, the, the mass, and the force factor. Now let's stick to the very interesting part of this uh, presentation. We will uh, set the control. And first, we will work with a broadband sound absorber. So uh, first of all, uh, you see this interface. We have the possibility to assign a prescribed, a given uh, target uh, acoustic impedance. So for now, we have no control. So the values of the target uh, impedance are so the coefficient mu r of resistance, mu m of mass, and mu c of compliance are all equal to 1. So we don't change uh, the passive loudspeaker. Now we want to assign. Uh, an impedance to the loudspeaker, which is rho c. So we will uh, fill the, the field of uh, the target impedance with rho c, or the normalized rho c, which is 1. And then we will, um, we will do first, uh, a first uh, measurement with this setting, with mu uh, m and mu c uh, is equal to 0 0.1, for instance. So we define the control law. Here we have the, both the diagram of the control uh, the, the, the transfer function of the controller that we need to apply to the speed goat. Uh, we have slightly changed the, the behavior of this uh, absorber with the active control by changing it to broadband absorber. So you can see that we have augmented the value of absorption at resonance. So we are almost equal to one with a slight uh, inflection due to the fact that maybe the parameter of the loudspeaker are not well accurately uh, identified.
So this is one of the limitations of these techniques, but still we have very good uh, absorption at resonance, which corresponds to a value of impedance, which is equal to rho c, on a broad frequency range on the, on the left curve. And we see that the, uh, va the, the frequency band over which the absorption coefficient uh, exceeds 0.8 uh, is between uh, 60 hertz and 400 hertz, more or less. So in the uh, former part, we have uh, shown how to set a broadband sun absorber for almost one decade, but we have seen that the absorption coefficient was not optimal in the band of the frequency of interest. And if you want to apply this for uh, an adequate termination for insertion loss measurement, we need to get much higher absorption coefficient, let's say 95% of absorption. So to, that, to do that, we will uh, set the electroacoustic absorber differently. We'll set as a series of narrowband absorber at different frequency band. So here we have decided to cover the range, uh, different frequency range centered at 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 25 hertz, 160 hertz, 200 hertz, and 250 hertz. And we do that just by switching the resonant frequency of the absorber also changing a bit the quality factor because of if we keep the passive quality factor it's a bit too narrow so we will just divide the quality factor by four. So first we set the quality factor to 0 0.25 compared to the passive one and then we, we set two different frequencies so let's start with 100 hertz so as you can see uh, the first peak of this uh, uh, resonator uh, appears at 100 hertz with a value of almost one and uh, covers values higher than 0 0.95 over a given frequency band to target 125 hertz. Once again, we have shifted the resonant frequency towards 125 hertz. Let's move to uh, the fourth one, which is uh, centered at 200 hertz. Last, we achieve, we will uh, end with 250 hertz. So you see that we are able to cover different frequency bands with optimal absorption coefficient, allowing us to use this time, this electroacoustic absorber as an anechoic termination for different frequency range, obviously, in a view to measure, uh, for instance, incension loss in uh, an impedance tube. To conclude, we have seen that we can achieve an effective ideal anechoic termination for impedance tube down to 100 Hz with dimension smaller than lambda of uh, 30, which is dimension of the electroacoustic abs absorber, which is 10 cm depth. So we limited here the demonstration to 95% uh, of absorption over 100 to 250 hertz, but we can show intermediate settings and we should have, we could have done the demonstration with much more uh, refinement of the, band, the, the frequency band of interest with alpha higher than 99%, but for the lack of uh, time, I just uh, limited to these five settings that were easy to, to set quickly. With the same setup, we can even go down to 50 Hz, but once again, I didn't show it for the sake of conciseness. And this setting has been used for the recent paper by Sinsin Go uh, on the sun absorption measurement of nonlinear electroacoustic absorber, where we needed to calibrate uh, an impedance tube for measuring the absorption coefficient of this device. And future work, we address the same kind of uh, validation, but in an insertion loss facility done, once again, down to 50 Hz.